So, hey guys, welcome back to Model Trains and Such. Um, I've not done a video for a bit, bit of time. I've had other things going on, but then starting school and, and what have you. So, just thought I'd come in tonight and do a, a quick little bit on the bushings for stopping the wheels from moving. Like you can see this on camera, but I've machined this bushing just over half inch. So the shaft slides nicely on there because it's going to have a drilled and tapped hole um, with a grub screw, possibly quarter twenty or maybe eight mil, something like that. Just one in there. Now what I did with these is when I set the the gauge of this wheel, I bored those out to half inch, which is the same as that. Slid those on, and I actually drilled into there it's not crawling on me it's probably a spider um drilled into there just to put a divot in there so i can nip the grub screws up and that's why this did this one didn't move um if you go back to my previous video i explain when i'm breaking it down of what actually happened one of these wheels moved so i'm making two of these bushings to eliminate that because the flange here where the rail is that stops the, the the rail rail on this flange stops the wheel going that way, but on the other side there's nothing here to stop it going that way. So that's why I've made that. Um, where is the other wheel over there? So we'll take this one out when he finds his chuck key. Out there. Now I know you're probably thinking, oh, there's a few sharp edges on that, but. I'll tie them up later on. I pre-drilled that. I think it's about 10 mil that I pre-drilled it. They're not really any particular size size on length because they don't really need to be. As long as there's enough material in there for me to put a grub screw in there, drill and tap it, that's all I really need. So. Right, we'll pop that up there out of the way. Make sure it doesn't fall down on me like the last one did, and we'll pour this one out. I'll just touch on in the inside. Couple of hours just to clean the hole out, then I'll give it a measure. I haven't yet set up the automatic travis on this yet because the motor I was going to use, I stole it for the local I'm building now. That's all the way through there. One more foul, just through there, just to clean it up so I can measure it. a nice shiny hole. No pun intended. <laughs> right, calipers. Let's have a measure. Um, we are in inches. What we got? Four eighty. So four eighty, twenty thou left till we get to half inch. 
half that, which is 10, because we've got 10 per side to come out that ball. So I'll put 10 on, 10 thou. Ten. We'll go eleven. Eleven thou. That should give me a thou clearance each side. Touch wood. It should. So let's go. It's a nicely machined hole, so we shall see if this fits in. It should do. Oh yes, lovely. Right, we can have it out now because that's done. Ah, uh, ba ba ba, truck key there. So there we are, that's nicely machined, off camera, I'll take all these bears off so it's not nice and sharp but that's a nice fit and all that's needed now is just a good screw straight through there, drill and tap it, glue the wheel back on, jobs are good and we can put it back together and uh, hopefully touch wood, that's all the problems sorted. Uh, then it's on to building a body for it. Um, I am building something similar to the Maxi Trap brush or bush, whatever you call it. Um, I'm not sure. Do I go for outside cranks or not? Um, I have got some outside cranks I had made up, uh, cut out with water jet, but I'm not sure about using them. I might just stick to. Um, an open body type loco. Um, there's a company called IP Engineering. They make 16mm locomotives and coaches and they do a rather nice um, open bodied narrow gauge diesel. So I might put a body like that. It might be a bit simpler than all the contours and corners of something built to, built to scale. This isn't really to scale. It's just loosely based on five inch, something that works quite nicely. Um, but I'm thinking of it's definitely narrow gauge because the wheels are inside the frames, or that's what I'm hoping gives the appearance of narrow gauge for this. But of, of course, there were some locos that were built with the wheels outside the frames that are narrow gauge, like a a sweet pea. I'm, I'm pretty sure a sweet pea and a sweet William that's actually based on a narrow gauge loco. So, but yeah, um, I'll get these drilled and tapped, and then the next time you, sh you should see it is when I'm assembling the loco again. So, thanks for watching. Um, it's only a quick one tonight. I guess I just had a free half an hour or so just to come out here and have a play about. If you like the video and you're not subscribed, if you could subscribe, it helps me out no end. Um, I've been looking at the the technical stuff about on my channel, and I get a lot of people view my channel, but don't seem to subscribe. I don't know why. So uh, if you could, if you see, if you're seeing this video for the first time and you like my content, it would be brilliant if you could you could uh, subscribe. So give it a like button. That'd be really awesome, and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye-bye.